Welcome to another Computer Tech TV video. My name is Rick Arter and today I'd like to talk to you guys about memory voltage. Mainly, what is the maximum memory voltage that all the different types of memory uh, that you basically use uh, a little bit in the past, now, and in the future. Uh, the maximum voltage that you want to run 24-7 and possibly, you know, maximum altogether. So I'll try to cover as much information in this short video as I can. Uh, I hope that I got everything correct on here. If there is anything that I didn't get right or I missed, please uh, leave a comment and I'll try to update this uh, because I don't want anything to be off. But basically, just to start out, um, I'm going to cover default memory and maximum memory voltages. Um, and I'm going to try to... Uh, get this so you guys can uh, you know understand this easily for anybody who's uh, not particular on the voltages that memory uses in a computer system so uh, first off uh, if you're gonna push this voltage to the max uh, please check out your motherboard and CPU combination first and if you're not using a multimeter to test for the actual voltages that you're running at least uh, look at the vo uh, other people's boards and uh, see what their stuff overvolts or undervolts so that you have an idea because some uh, dim slots actually can overvolt as much as 0.1 volts so uh, you can be running 2.2 volts in the BIOS and it could be 2.3 actually so uh, it's a very good thing to check out before you're gonna push your voltages on anything I mean this goes for anything uh, that you're gonna overclock and you're gonna overvolt you always wanna know exactly you know what you got to start with before you start pushing crazy volts because you know if you think you're running one voltage but you're really too high uh, in some cases it doesn't matter you know how much cooling you have you're gonna destroy that part so uh, I hope this can help you guys out a little bit so I'm basically gonna cover SD RAM all the way to DDR4 and I know DDR4 is not out but I did find some stuff uh, and voltages of it to you know kind of get you guys ready a little bit if you're interested in that so start this out uh, first thing I want to cover is SD RAM now I know nobody uses this and if I do they're not overclocking it so the default voltage on uh, SD RAM is 3.3 volts might be a little different on certain sticks but this is what the default is uh, that I found so maximum voltage you know maybe 3.4 3.5 I'm not sure I didn't really find any information on that and I've never used it personally so uh, or at least overclocked it so let's move down a little bit here uh, DDR memory the default voltage on most sticks is going to be 2.5 volts however if you're running the PC3200 uh, the standard voltage on that is actually 2.6 volts so um, and the maximum voltage on DDR uh, from what I read like I said I've never actually overclocked DDR memory myself uh, is 2.7 to 2.8 volts now uh, value or lower end memory of course you're gonna not be able to push the volts as high and really you wanna keep the volts as low as you can because when you push them beyond a certain limit it's really kinda like a reverse effect you know what I mean you start killing the parts and you don't really get any more overclock because it takes so much cooling and so on and so on so uh, 2.8 volts I would say is the absolute max from what I've read uh, 2.9 on some really high-end kits if you get really good cooling but like I said I mean after a while it's just kind of a waste so now let's move on to DDR2 we're getting a little more mainstream here so basically on to DDR2 Default voltage for DDR2, which a lot of you guys probably know already, is 1.8 volts. Now, depending on what kind of kits you get, the uh, voltages are going to range anywhere from 1.8 to 2.2 on most kits. Uh, obviously, the higher speed and the lower latency, you're going to have higher voltages. Uh, maximum volts for DDR2 in a normal 24-7 uh, air-cooled situation. I'm not really talking so much on the crazy, you know... Uh, water cooled and liquid cool, uh, you know liquid nitrogen crazy cooled stuff you know what I mean because you can do almost anything to any component these days this is more of just you know mainstream voltages here what normal people are going to try to run as well as a little bit on the high end you know so uh, 2.25 to 2.3 is about the highest I'd say uh, is safe um, I've seen a little bit higher 2.35 to 2.4 
Uh, and according to JDAC, the maximum recommended voltage is 1.9 and should be considered the absolute maximum when memory stability is an issue, i.e. in servers and other mission critical devices. In addition, JDAC states that memory modules must sustain up to 2.3 volts before incurring any permanent damage, although they might actually not function at that uh, voltage. You see what I'm saying? So they can withstand it, but it doesn't mean they're going to be stable. So it doesn't mean you can crank it up to 2.3 and then expect it to run at, you know, 1,000, 1,200 megahertz. You know what I mean? Some can, but most of them work, will require less voltage to get to that speed. You know what I mean? So anyway, moving on along. Now we're going to go to DDR3. I don't have very much experience with DDR3 memory since I do not have a DDR3 motherboard, but I've uh, got some information here that hopefully will help any of you guys. Uh, default is 1.5 volts, and from what I read, uh, most kits range from 1.5 to 1.7 volts. Kingston memory, I found uh, the few kits, uh, some of them, most of them, are running 1.7 to 1.9 at CL9 timings, I believe. And then Patriot's running 1.8 volts at CL9 timings. Wintech Amp X actually is rated at 1.9 volts. And I believe their timings are CL8 at 1600 megahertz. So I'm not sure if this is actually correct. I read these off Newegg. Uh, and then as well here on DDR3, according to JDEC, the maximum recommended voltage is 1.575 volts and should be considered the absolute maximum, just like I stated before. So... Uh, also, the maximum they state it can withstand is 1.97 volts without incurring permanent damage, although they will not function at that level most of the time. Okay, And then uh, it does get kind of, of uh, hard from here because AMD and Intel systems are slightly different. So on this, if you're running DDR3, since I'm actually not running a system here, uh, I would suggest checking online and seeing exactly what your combination uh, is capable of running maximum but from what I read on the Intel at stock uncore voltages this would be uh, stock you know no overclocking I guess you could probably overclock a little bit with the stock uncore uh, 1.65 volts is the max memory voltage you want to run however the maximum uh, rating on the VDIM is actually 1.875 volts so the maximum for DDR3 I would say 1.65 but like I said on some kits, some systems, uh, if you start overclocking, as long as you keep things within the certain levels, especially in the Intels and the new Core i7s and stuff like that, uh, you know, you can push it to 1.8, 1.85 volts uh, and you should be okay as long as the memory is running cool. And the memory temperature is the biggest deal since these things are very sensitive to voltages and overheating. So always keep your memory as cool as you, po uh, cool as you possibly can. And really it's easy, especially when running DDR3. I mean, it does get hot when you're running these high voltages. But just a small little, you know, 40 millimeter, 60, or even, you know, an 80 millimeter fan running, you know, 7 volts or something like that, just getting some airflow over it is really all it needs. They have some high-tech coolers out there from Corsair, OCZ, uh, all those. But, you know, if you want to do it on the cheap, just throw a little, you know, 60 millimeter, 40 millimeter fan on there. However you got to get it on there. Just like on a, a chipset heat sink, and uh, it'll it'll help you out greatly. So I even suggest this if you're not overclocking it, just for the lifespan part of it. Now let's finish this up with DDR4. I managed to find some info information about DDR4, and uh, from what I read, it's going to come out uh, when it does debut. It's going to be rated at 1.2 volts. Then later on, they're actually going to, I guess, redo it, and they're going to have 1.1 to 1.2 volt standards. And then, uh, I guess along this time, once they really, you know, get the sticks out there and they start uh, maximizing their capabilities, you know, speeds, timings, performance, stuff like that, they're actually going to release the 1.05 volt low volt uh, option, which is kind of like what they're doing now with DDR3 when they're releasing the lower voltage uh, DDR3 modules. Uh, the maximum voltage on DDR4, I did not see any information, obviously. I don't know if there's anybody who's actually tested DDR4 modules. I didn't really look too far into it. 
But uh, I would say, just a blind guess here, I would say if we're running at 1.2 or 1.1 standard, I'd say maybe, uh, depending on how the CPUs are working at that time and what their voltages are and how everything's interconnected with the memory controllers, you're looking at maybe uh, 1.3, 1.35 volts, maybe 1.4 if you're pushing it, you know, so, um, so yeah guys, that's about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you guys learned something. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment or you can make a video response if you have any information you would like to add to this on your personal endeavors with these types of memory. I'd like to hear it. So uh, this is all for now. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.